ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد مدي برضوز and sisters in Islam we continue inshallah this beautiful book by the Sheikh Abdulaziz bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala the important, important lessons for the Muslim Ummah and we have reached yeah, in the last session we talked about the wudu and today you continue the author rahimahullah what Rahimallah Ta'ala said, he's talking now about the wajibat al-wudu. Okay. Uh, he's saying that the obligatory elements of wudu are uh, washing the face, including rinsing out the mouth with water and cleansing the nostrils of the nose. So, this is this element or uh, these are the uh, not obligatory the pillars of wudu this are kanudu okay so you wash the face you wash your face <coughs> including rinsing the mouth with water and the nostrils why did he say that why did he say that? He said that because this, the nose and the mouth are integral, integral parts of the face. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So you believe when you intend to pray, wash your faces. And this is the face. So Allah mentioned the whole the whole so the face is the whole so when the whole is mentioned then the parts also are included the parts are included naturally so I will mention the whole which is the face then the the parts of the face are included are included So, this is an evidence from the Quran that you watch the rinse your mouth and the rinsing the mouth and, and cleansing the nostrils. The mouth, you take water, you rinse it, then you blow it out. And then the nostrils, you sniff the water, then you blow it out. <coughs> and this since you mentioned al-kul, so the kul is the face, so the parts of the kul, the whole, are included. So anyone who wants to exclude the 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 parts of the face, like the mouth and the nose should bring his own evidence because Allah mentioned the face and the nostrils, the nose and the mouth are included. And that's what even uh, Umar understood. So that's why he used to wash even his eyes. But of course, that was a jihad from him. Why we excluded the eyes when they are part of the face because of the sunnah. 
So the Sunnah explained to us when the Prophet ﷺ performed his wudu, he washed the face, he rinsed his mouth, and he also cleansed his nostrils, but he did not wash his eyes. So we realize and we came to know that the eyes are excluded from this whole. I hope that you understand what I'm saying because what I'm talking about now here, this, these are usul terminologies and they are discussed in Ilm al usul Okay, so the, so the whole is mentioned, which is the face, that means it covers everything except the eyes because the Sunnah explained to us which parts of this face should be washed and the Sunnah explained to us the mouth and the nose, the nostrils, and excluded the eyes. So washing the eyes is not part of the wudu. I hope you are following my dear brothers and sisters. So here the, the author of Allah is saying, washing the face, including rinsing out the mouth, <coughs> okay, and cleansing the nostrils, and you should do it excessively. So try to <coughs> the, uh, sniff the water, take the water, put the water into your nostrils until the water reaches here and you start shedding tears in the beginning. Because that is how you will clean the whole nostrils and you will not have nasal issues and nasal problems. Except when you are fasting, you should uh, just do it lightly. So that's number one. So washing the face. And the face is started from the top of the forehead to the bottom of the chin and from the ear lobe of one, this right ear lobe of the eye, of the ear, to the other one. From this side, this side, from this side to this side, these are the the <coughs> the limits or the boundary of the face. Then the second thing, washing the two hands. The two hands up to the elbows. <laughs> Now, this ila, that's again, I will go back to Arabic. Ila in Arabic is harfun tiha, ibtida wa intiha. We say, mashaytu min al bayti ila al masjid. I walked from my house to the mosque. So from A to B, to move from A to B, half tiha. So now, if it is half tiha, this ila up to. Now, are the elbows included or not? Are the elbows included or not? So now, sometimes ila means up to until you reach the limit. So the limit is not included, is not included the limit. And sometimes the limit is included. You have to understand Arabic. Sometimes the end is included, the, the goal, the end of my journey, of my moving, when I reach the point, point B, sometimes point B is included, sometimes it is excluded. How do I know? For example, that's why you need the Sunnah to explain to you, to explain to you. <coughs> the uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, 
ثم أتم الصيام إلى الليل ثم أتم الصيام إلى الليل إلى إلى الليل then complete the fast up to the night now is the night included or not included in other words I should carry on fasting till the night start the moment the beginning of the night and that is the sunset the disk of the sun disappeared that's the end or should I wait until I see darkness and see the stars which one should I wait until the night is included or up to the beginning of the night and they should break my fast the answer is to the beginning the moment the night begins which is the sunset the, and that is the other day start immediately you break your fast so the the end which is the night is not included up to the beginning of it because the sunnah explained to us okay that you don't wait until you see the stars and you see the darkness. You don't wait until that. The moment the disk of the sun uh, disappeared behind the horizon and you don't see it, you break your fast. Even you see the whiteness of the light on the horizon, you break your fast. You don't wait. And sometimes the point B is included, the end is included, sometimes. For example, Allah says, Subhana alladhi asra bi abidihi laylan min al masjid al haram ila al masjid al aqsa. Ila al masjid al aqsa. So now, is the night journey from the masjid al haram till the door of Al-Aqsa to the doorsteps or the mosque is included and the Prophet entered the mosque so here in Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa so the mosque which is the end which is point B is included because the Prophet ﷺ, he did not just reach the and stay outside the mosque. He entered the mosque and he prayed in the mosque. So the end is included. The end is included. So now we come to the ayah. Ya yalladina amanu, O you who believe. Ida kuntum the salah, when you intend to pray. Faqsulu wujuhakum. Wash your faces, and your hands, up to the elbows. Now, are the elbows included or up to here and that's it? We don't know. Because it can mean up to or the elbow is the beginning of it, up to the beginning of it, of it or all of it. So that's why the Sunnah explained to us that the Prophet ﷺ used to wash his elbows. Okay? So the elbows are included and the Sunnah explained to us and told us which meaning to take. That the elbows included or excluded. So that's why my dear brothers and sisters, without the Sunnah, you will not be able to understand your deen and and worship Allah correctly. I hope you are taking notes and following. So, ila harf ibtida wa intiha is this an article? It tells you, uh, talks about the beginning physical movement from A to B. Sometimes point B is included, sometimes it's just up to the the beginning of that target or end. 
So <clears throat> watching the hands up to and including the elbows. After that, number three, he said, Rahimallah, wiping the whole head, including the two ears. So you take your hands, wet hands, you take them back and flow, back and bring them back, uh, to the front. And men and women are alike, just the upper part of your head. You take your hands like this, here, till the ends of the head, head and bring them back. You don't wipe your ears. Uh, nay, the neck. Wiping the neck is not part of the of the wudu. And this is bid'ah. Women, just also the same, like men. No need for her to wipe all her hair traces. No. Just what is here on the skull, like this. Up to here, and bring your hand back. So wiping the whole head including the two ears. Number four, washing the two feet including the heels. You see here? Faqsulu. Ujuha kum. Ujuha. Ujuha here is maf'ul bihi. Object. That's why there is fatha. Ujuha kum. Then Wow, half out connector. Would you have come? What idea come? Idea come, Matuf Alehi. So here, idea come is connected with the faces. So the faces, Al Wuju, Mansuba, is in the objective form. So idea come the same. And so they share the, the, the verb, the action, which is washing the hands, washing. So you wash the faces and you wash the hands. فَقْسُلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ وَامْسَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ Because of the back has to jump. That's why there is kasra. Wamsahu bi ru'usikum. So, washing the two feet. Washing the two feet, including the heels. So the feet, you wash them. Faqsul wujuhakum wa idiyakum. Wamsahu bi ru'usikum wa arjulakum. Arjulakum. So here, arjula, monsu. Just like the you wash your hands and you wash your face. So you don't wipe like the head. No, you wash your feet. And the sunnah expl explain that. Anyway, there is qira'a ashriya saying, فَقْسُلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ فَمْسَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُلِكُمْ أَرْجُلِي كَسْرَ So what does this mean now? Because here it means that I wipe the feet. I don't wash them. And this is correct قِرَاءَ How do you understand this now? So so the ulama, they said, they may, when we read, the meaning becomes that this is the evidence for wiping over the feet, which is due, uh, wiping over the socks or wiping over the, the hoof. So this is an evidence, this qira'ah is an evidence for wiping over the hoof or the uh, socks when we read Arjulikum, and when the other uh, famous, another, the other Qira'a wa Arjulakum, it means you wash. So the feet, if you are wearing something, socks or 
or uh, hoof, you wipe over them. But if they are, you are not wearing anything, you wash them. So this is the understanding of the two modes and the two types of recitation. <clears throat> so washing the two feet, including the heels. So when you are washing, taking wudu, make sure that you wash your heels. Waylu lil aqabi min al-nar, the Prophet ﷺ said, to the Sahaba when they were taking wudu and you saw some of them are taking, making the wudu light. So he told them, Wailu lil aqabi min al-nar, go to the hills from the hellfire. So when you are taking wudu, my dear brothers and sisters, make sure your heels are washed totally, especially the back of it. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he saw a man, he prayed, and there was a small part of his foot was not uh, washed. Small area. So he asked him to reveal the wudu and told him, What is this? So the wudu is incomplete, and if the wudu is incomplete, your salah is incomplete. Then, doing the ablution in the prescribed sequence without delays. This is very important. So you do, this is what they call the muala and the tafsir, that you maintain the sequence. You wash the face, and as explained, you uh, mouth, wash your, rinse your mouth and your nostrils. So you maintain the sequence. And you maintain the order, right hand and the left hand. And wipe over your head and including the ear. Now, how about wiping? How to wipe? Should I wipe the whole hair or part of it? Of course, here yeah, there are, there's a difference in, among the school of thought. For example, in the Shafi'i school, you, if you wipe part of the hair, just few hairs even, then your wudu is correct. Your wudu is correct. The mentioned in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ puts his hands back and forth. So how the Shafi'iyah, what is the proof and evidence for the Shafi'i school that if I wipe Part of the hair, it will do is correct. Again, ah, subhanallah. Again, it is the issue of the nature of the Arabic language. And the Quran came in Arabic. And Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah, is a linguist. And Hujja, an authority, when it comes to the Arabic tongue, hujjah. Just, if he says something, he just like the rest of the grammarians, the rest of the et etymologists. Because Imam Shabir, rahimahullah, he grew up in one of the most eloquent Arab tribes, Hudayl, Hudayl. So he was so eloquent, and he was a poet. So the ba in the Arabic language, my dear brothers and sisters, only the ba has around and more than eighteen meanings. Ba, the ba, only ba. <laughs> 
the dot only. So sometimes it means part of the verb. And sometimes it means to be attached to, adhesive to. As Imam Ibn Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, Imam Ibn Malik is a grammarian. He made a poem on grammar rules. Consists of 1,000 verses called Al-Fiyat Ibn Malik. So he mentioned in his al and I told the, you this before, but you, maybe you, you have forgotten. He said, Bil Bashta'in, Bil Bashta'in, Addi, Awad, Al Siti, Wa Mithla Ma'a, Wa Min, Wa An, Biham Tuti. He just mentioned few meanings of the ba. He said, Bil Ba, Stan. So the ba here, sometimes he's telling you, it means to seek help and aid. So when you say, Katab to Bil Qalam, Ba, Ba, Bil Qalam. So here it means, I wrote with the help of the pen or using the pen. So the back little isti'ana. Isti'ana. Seeking help. Bil basta'in. That's one meaning. Awwad. Also ba, it comes to me in, in, in case when you compensate something. You buy something, you give the price of it, you compensate the seller. You compensate the, the seller and you take the 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 item, the product. You say, Ishtaraitu Al Kitaba. I bought the book, Ishtaraitu Al Kitaba Bidirhamin. Ba Bidirhamin. So the ba here means the price of the compensation for the book. I gave the uh, I gave the uh, the, the seller the dirham and he gave me the book. So the bahia is ta'widiya, ta'wid, compensation. And always when you are reading and you came across a ba, take care. See the beauty of you know Arabic? So the one that has the bar becomes the price. The price. So that's why Allah is blaming Bani Israel. How you exchange okay, the best, the honey, the men and the salwa for garlic and for onion. So you made the men and the salwa the price for garlic and onion. Or yeshtaroon al-dalala bil huda. You you bought and purchased misguidance for guidance. So the guidance becomes the price for the misguidance. Listen to me, my dear brothers and sisters. Wallahi, I am sincere. I am advising you from the bottom of my heart. I am sincere. To learn Arabic without Arabic, forget it. That you will understand your deen profoundly. You will not. So learn Arabic. And master it. So, اشتريتُ الْكِتَابَ بِدِرْهَمْ What is the price? The one that has the blah becomes the price. So the dirham is the price, so I'm leaving the dirham with the seller and take the book. Now, 
Do you exchange? At the step, do you know the one who is adna with the one who is khair? So what is the price? The one who is khair became the price. So I'm leaving the man and the salwa, the honey. Okay, and the the man, and I take and pick the garlic, huh, and the onion. And the beans. Okay, so this is what another meaning. Bilba stand. Addi. Another meaning of the ba that I can use it to convert an intransitive verb into transitive verb. Because in Arabic, the verbs are two types, lazim wa muta'addi. Lazim means intransitive verb, like in English. Muta'addi, transitive verb. The lazim, the intransitive verb in Arabic, if I want it to become transitive, I use the ba. I use ba. For example, dahaba, dahaba. Dahaba rajul, the man went. The dahaba, the, the verb dahaba, is intransitive verb. Intransitive verb or mulazim does not take an object or mafroul bihi. So how to make it transitive? Then I use the help of the ba, so I borrow the ba, then the and add it to the verb, then the verb becomes transitive. For example, Allah says, Dahaballahu bi nurihim. Dahaballahu bi nurihim. So why the ba came here? Because Dahaba is fairly lazim intransitive. In order to make it transitive, you need it to you need to use the back. That's why the back came. Binurian. So Ibn Malik is saying Bil Bastain Addi means to make the intransitive verb, transitive verb, to make Al Fa'li Lazim Mutaaddi. That's what Addi. Bil Bastain Addi. Awam compensation. We explain. When it becomes the price of something. Also it means to attach something or to adhere something with something or rub something against something. Okay. So that is the meaning of the back sometime. al -suti. And this is the meaning of the ba in the ayah of the wudu. That means your hands, they rub against the head and they touch the head. So you wipe over the head. This is the correct meaning, usage of the ba in this context. It is just like the ba used when Allah said, وَلْيَطَّوَّفُ بِالْبَيْتِ الْعَتِيبُ so you circumambulate the ancient house. So you are almost closed as if you are touching the house. Okay? So you go around the house very close to the house. Well you tawafu bilbaytil atir. So bilbastain addi awud al suti wa mitlama. Also sometimes the bat means with or along with ma'a sometimes it means ba ba here means ma'a wa mithla ma'a 
you say, Bi'tu al-bayta bi'athatihi. Bi'tu al-bayta bi'athatihi. I sold the house along with the furniture. So the house and the furniture. Bi asatihi means ma asatihi, ma asatihi, along with the furniture. So this is another usage of the ba means ma, wa mitla ma, wa min. And sometimes it means from. It means from. You say, Sharibtu bima in Neeli. Sharibtu bima and Neel. Means, Sharibtu min ma in Neel. I drank from the water of the Nile River. So, bima in Neel means from. So, sometimes. Ba means none. So the, the ba has many meanings. Okay. Sometimes it means part of. It means min. It means min. Part from. I did not drink uh, the whole water of the Nile part of the water of the Nile. So Shafi'i, Rahimallah, the school of Shafi'i, they say, Pamsahu, Biru'usikum, Bi, Biru'usikum, this ba is Tab'idiyya, means part of the hair, part of the hair. Because it is possible in the Arabic language. So that's why the Ar understanding the Arabic even, and Imam Jabi is an expert, is not enough to understand the Quran. You need the Sunnah. So you need the Sunnah to tell me which meaning of this, the different meanings of the usages and the uses of that. Which one? Is it part of? Is it to touch? What is it? So the Sunnah explained to me. So here when we look to the how the Prophet ﷺ understood this ba through his actions, he wiped all over his hair. That's one. He did not just wipe few hairs, as the uh, school of Imam Shafi'i Rahmanullah and the Shafi'i school says. If you just wipe few hairs, your wudu is correct. And you consider wiping off of the rest of the hair is sunnah. But few hairs, enough. So when we come to the sunnah, we found that the Prophet Sallam, he wiped all, all over the head. He did not just wipe few hairs. So we knew now that the bahia is not tab'idiyya part of. It means ilsaqiyya, to uh, uh, be adhesive, to be in contact. And the hands, they have to be in contact with the, with the hair. Like, well, يَطَّوَّفُ بِالْبَيْتِ الْعَتِيرِ Is the ba there means part of? No. Because you know the hatim, hatim, that which is the arch, what they call it, hijr ismail, is part of the Kaaba. So you have to make the tawaf, including from outside the hatim or the arch. If it means, if the ba means part of, then I can just make tawaf around the cubicle, the part of the Kaaba. So that means I can go inside the hatim and finish. Huh? So here the ba means, al satiya you come in contact and very close to the object, that which is the Kaaba. So the Sunnah explained to us, Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ explained to us that the Prophet ﷺ, he wiped all over all the hair. That's number one. Number two, he wiped part of the hair 
he raised his imama, the turban, while part of it, but he also continued while being offered the imama, while being offered the imama. Okay, he didn't just wipe part of the head and he left it, no. He wiped part of the head and continued wiping of the imama. That's the second thing the Prophet ﷺ said. That's another scenario. Another scenario, the Prophet ﷺ, he wiped over the imama without wiping any strand of hair. So we have, regarding wiping the hair, you wipe all of it, Part of it, and then you continue the imama or over the imama only. So this is how the Prophet ﷺ and the Sunnah explained to us how to wipe over the head. And this helps us, of course, women. Let's say she, she put uh, something in her hair, henna, and things like that. And she doesn't want to wipe. Want to wipe. It's very really difficult. Then you can, she can just wipe over the khimar, over the, the head cover. No need for her even to uh, wipe part of her hair. She can just wipe over the khimar. Okay? So, so this how you see now why the scholars differ. There are reasons behind their uh, disagreement and why they disagree on certain matters. So, doing the wudu in the prescribed sequence, prescribed sequence. So now one, let's say, one is following Shabir's school. And this is how he prays, he wide part, and that's it. Is his salah invalid? No, his salah is valid. But now, since you came to know the strongest opinion, wipe over the whole hair. And even the Shafir school says, wiping the whole hair is sunnah. So do it. So do it. So perform the wudu in the Prescribe sequence, you maintain the sequence. What if by mistake, by mistake, I watch one limb, one organ before the other? Is the wudu valid or invalid? No, the wudu is valid. But if I did the, the wudu in totally uh, wrong manner, let's say I started with my feet and I did perform the wudu in the reverse order, then this manner is not legal and the wudu is invalid, though I washed all the organs. Then the author Allah Sa'ala mentioned the, the things that will nullify one's wudu, the nawaqad wudu or the nullifiers. He said there are six things Number one, the natural excretion, such as urine, urine, feces, gas, etc. So whatever comes, the discharge, whether it is solid or gaseous or liquid. So anything of that will nullify your wudu. So you have to be careful. Second, any unclean substance excessively discharged from the body. Okay, any unclean substance excessively discharged from the body through the normal discharge. Okay, like uh, blood or any other liquid. Then losing one's consciousness or sanity, or reason. Okay. Fuqdan al-aql. Okay, so when you lose your sanity, so the wudu becomes invalid. Due to sleep, so when sleep nullifies the wudu. So when you fall asleep, your wudu will be nullified. 
loss of consciousness, you came, entered into coma, or anything similar, or by mistake you took medicine or you took something which intoxicates, so that will nullify your wudu. Then eating camel meat, okay, because the Prophet he told the Sahaba to renew their wudu. When akala lahm al yazur fal yatawadwa, whoever eat the the camel of the meat should renew his wudu. And uh, maybe you come across that they said that a man released gas and the Prophet ﷺ didn't want to, uh, to embarrass him, so he told the rest take wudu. That's not true. That's not true. If you come across this, because the camels are uh, different animals, different animals, and Allah created them from the similar, the same material like the, the jinn. Okay, so that's why you need to renew your wudu. And this issue uh, is also controversial between the schools of fiqh. Some they're saying this is abrogated because towards the end of the life of the Prophet he, he used not to take wudu from whatever is touched by the fire, that means cooked by the fire. So they say the camel's meat when it is cooked uh, it will not nullify the wudu, and this is, uh, it was in the beginning, then it was abrogated. But the strongest opinion, it's not abrogated, because to claim abrogation, to say this is abrogated, you have to mention the date, so that we know, this is said after this. And sometimes, the hadith, one of them is general, and one of them is specific. So, to not taking wudu from whatever is touched by the fire is general text, and the taking wudu from the uh, eating the meat of the camel is specific, khas, and this is am, so always the khas will be removed and will become an exception. And the rest, the ruling is applied to it. For example, حُرِمَتْ عَلَيْكُمْ الْمَيْتَ Dead animals are prohibited for you. So this is general text, نَصٌ عَام Any dead is haram. But then the sunnah came and excluded the fish. So the fish now is not haram. It's excluded from that ruling, exempted. And the rest of the elements are included and the ruling is applied to that. Okay, so the, uh, so the strongest opinion that if you eat the camel meat, renew your wudu. Then, the rejection of Islam. Ridda, if someone apostate, became an apostate, then his, and he was in state of wudu, then that wudu is invalid even if he comes back, okay, and to Islam, he has to uh, renew his wudu, or how wudu. And then touching the sexual organs with hand, okay, if you touch your private parts with hand, then you need to renew your wudu. And this is also here is uh, controversial issues. There are different opinions among the scholars, so the Sheikh holds the opinion that touching your private part uh, nullifies the wudu, and the Sheikh Rahimullah uh, holds the opinion that the hadith of uh, uh, we have two hadith hadith Talq ibn Ali and hadith uh, Shall I remember her name now? Uh, Sahabiyah. So there are two hadiths, and there is apparent con contradiction between them. Hadith Busra, yes, Hadith Busra. So there are <coughs> uh, apparent contradiction. Hadith of Busra says, Man Master Zakarahu Falyatawadwa. 
whoever touches his organ should renew his wudu. Then we have another hadith, and both are correct, uh, authentic. And then we, then we have another hadith, which is the hadith of Falq ibn Ali. Falq ibn Ali, he asked, what if I touch my organ? The Prophet ﷺ said, Innama huwa bad'atun mink. It is an integral part of your body. So it doesn't uh, nullify your wudu. So some of the ulama, they consider hadith busra. Okay. Uh, more authentic. Okay. So they give the fatwa that, so they believe that if you touch your private parts, the wudu will be nullified. Others, they are taking the hadith of Falq ibn Ali and they say, no, if you touch your private part, your wudu will not be nullified. And the third opinion says, we can apply both of them, and that's what Ibn Taymiyyah said and others, rahimahumullah, we can apply both a hadith depending on the situation and the application. We, the hadith that says it will nullify should be understood in the context if you touch your private part for seeking pleasure. You are masturbating, seeking pleasure. So you are touching and playing with your private part. So in that case, it will break your wudu. And the hadith of talq if you touch your private part by accident, by accident, or for reason, you felt scratchy. So then we can apply both the hadith and no need to drop one of them. And some they say the hadith of talq is obligated, but they fail to reduce the date. So the claim of obligation is rejected. So the strongest opinion here that if you touch your private part by accident, you are taking a shower and then you are using the towel and by accident you touch your private part, then your wudu is correct. The same thing. If you are mothers that are changing the nappies and the diapers of the children, so they are touching the private parts of the children. So that means they have to go and renew the wudu. So we face difficulty and make their life uh, uh, miserable. So the strongest opinion that both ahadith can be applied, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. So also, the, uh, how about touching, again we conclude with this, if you touch the hand of a woman who is not mahram, who is not a mahram, in the Shafi'i school, you have to renew your wudu, even if you touch the hand of your wife. Because Allah says, nisa, or if you touch women. The rest of the school, they say, no. Touching women here, it means sexual intercourse. So the strongest opinion here that if you touch your, the hand of your wife or a woman who's not a mahram, your wudu is correct. It's not nullified. And the Prophet ﷺ, he kissed one of his wives and he went to the masjid and he did not renew his wudu. <laughs> so we stop at this point. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our knowledge in the deen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us our faults and mistakes and ignorance. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of you, my dear brothers and sisters, immensely. For your patience and attendance. Barakallah fikum, Jazakum Allah khaira, Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Jazakum Allah khaira, Sheikh, for the uh, beautiful session. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm pretty sure it was very beneficial for all of us and uh, extremely enlightening. Um, now we'll open the floor for questions and answers. Uh, if there are any questions, I would request the participants to post them on the chat box so that we can forward it to the sheikh jazakumullah khair we have a question here sheikh uh, the question is is wiping the ears while making wudu wajib it's 
it is part of the head. Al Zanani min al the Prophet said. Part of the head. Um, and, and, and even, this is uh, now listen to me as a piece of advice for you. As you know, the rulings of the Sharia are five haram, makruh, fard, sunnah, and halal. So if you find an issue between scholars, something, fard, something, sunnah, do it. Something fard, something wajib, do it. Something makruh, someone say sunnah. Sorry, one is saying haram, one is saying makruh, leave it. Someone is saying fard, the other is saying sunnah, do it, and halal is it. This will solve maybe more than 90% of your problems. Okay? Uh, they're also asking on the issue of uh, zakat and fitr in the form of cash. Uh, is it permissible to distribute it in the form of cash? This is a controversial issue. The, the strongest opinion, not cash. Food. This is the strongest. Though some of the fuqaha and some of the uh, so in the past and in our time, they are saying it is okay, it is permissible. But the, the strongest opinion and the Famous opinion, it is food. You have to give it food. And Allah knows best. Next. Uh, so far, these are the only questions that have come to me, Sheikh. We, we want, we can wait for some time. Yes, Sheikh, I don't think there are any more questions. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So I would like to end the session. Uh, I would like to thank the Sheikh once again for coming and giving us a beneficial session. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.